Sir Andrew Hall has been found guilty of assault with a firearm in the 2018 shooting death of Vladimir Arboleda, but a judge declared a mistrial on a second charge of manslaughter. Hall works in Danville and is the first police officer to be charged in an on-duty shooting in Contra Costa County. For more on this, we're going to bring in legal analyst Michael Cardoza. Michael, thanks for joining us this afternoon. First, your reaction here. Are you surprised the jury could agree on one charge, but not the more serious manslaughter charge? It doesn't surprise me at all. Juries do that all the time. They compromise. So when they're in the jury room, the jurors that are saying to the manslaughter charge, not guilty, the guilty voters in that room will say, well, how do you feel about the assault with the deadly weapon? Those jurors obviously said in this case, okay, we'll compromise to that. We'll go guilty of the assault with the deadly weapon, plus him using a gun which amps up the time he might serve in state prison. So does it surprise me? No. It's 2021, and this shooting happened in 2018. We saw charges brought uh, several, there, there, there was a span before we saw these charges brought forward. And now we see this um, guilty verdict in terms of the assault. And then we have the mistrial on the manslaughter. But I'm curious to know, now that this jury has said we found the officer guilty of assault, what precedent does this set? Well, I'm not a... I'm not sure it serves any precedents because each jury um, that serves on individual jurors are very much different. You never know what you're going to get in your jury panel. I've had cases uh, where juries have hung 11 to 1 for not guilty, and then the DA decides to try it again, and the, another jury comes back guilty. So go figure. You never know what a a jury will do. Okay, so then now that this mis mistrial has been declared on the manslaughter charge, what do you anticipate will happen next in terms of the DA's office bringing the case forward again? Well, I don't think they will retry the manslaughter. They have enough with the conviction of the assault with a deadly weapon and using a firearm. That possibly, I doubt he's going to get 10 years or more, but it, it could uh, get him 10 plus years in the state prison. So the district attorney in this case will look at that. And of course, it depends on the count uh, in the hung jury. And by that, I mean, out of 12 people, did seven say not guilty and five said guilty? Or was it 11 to one either way? DA's offices look at that in deciding whether they're going to retry a case. For example, if it's 11 to one for guilty, then uh, they'll say, well, let's give it a go. Let's retry it again. We'll probably get a conviction next time. But in this case, the delay caused a lot of consternation within the Contra Costa DA's office. As you know, the DA of Contra Costa did not have any experience as a prosecutor before being appointed and elected as a DA. So even intra Contra Costa DA's office, you had a split as to what should be done in the case. That's interesting. Okay, I want to switch gears really quickly before we let you go because another uh, big headline today is news about a convicted sex offender who will possibly be released soon into a neighborhood in East Palo Alto and the community there uh, having concerns about living so close to them. So I want to know what you think in terms of what is the process that goes into determining where a sex offender will be uh, living upon release? How much say does the community really have in whether that person lives near them? Well, the community has a lot of say in it. And again, not again, but this is a classic NIMBY, not in my backyard. Everybody understands that at some point, these type of people are going to get out of prison, sexually violent predators. In this case, whatever powers that be decided he served his appropriate time, now he's getting out. This is a housing issue. And the community in Palo Alto says, wait a minute, look at the schools that are here that he's going to be near. It's the antithesis of what we want. Put him somewhere else. And that's why I say it's a NIMBY situation, because you're not going to find any community that's going to open their arms and say, come on in. We're all for a, a violent sex offender living in our neighborhood. So it'll be up to the powers that be that find a location, and it strikes me a better location for him to live in. And then he has to notify the police departments, has to keep the public advised of where he is. And then, as you know, that leads to some problems because people in the neighborhood sadly often take 
you know, it into their own hands and say things or cause trouble with that particular person. It's a tough situation, sure. but the neighbor should speak up. Sure, and, and that's exactly what the police chief there in East Palo Alto is asking for. All right, legal analyst Michael Cardoza, we're going to have to leave it there, but we always appreciate you joining us and giving us your insight.